water out of the creeks. Now they're so polluted, we can't even go stand in it. We took, when the tide would go out, dinner was set. There was clean water. There was clean air. There was no endangered species. There was no endangered plants. We always had limited population, and if we took a life, we used all of it. My dad shot a deer, he'd use every part of that deer, the hoofs for noisemakers, the hides. I ask him, and what happens in the winter when your moccasins get wet, he said, we go to the seal, but they'd use everything where the seal it will keep their feet dry. I'm here for my great-grandchildren. water, I want this or that. My granddaughter said it to me best. She said, I want my baby to enjoy the water the way I did and swim in it and do ceremony in it the way she did when she was growing up. It's been years since we were able to even go into the water. We get rash on our legs and that's to hear these two Texas billionaires, they want to dredge into our inlet. I wonder how they'd feel if I went to their property in Texas and said, oh, I'm going to start digging here and I'm going to plant some things and some flowers and I'm going to set up my house right here. Yeah. That's how it feels to me. This is my territory. I'm the, I'm, I'm the people of the inlet. Woo! Or if I went anywhere, even if I went here and said, I'm going to build a house right here or go in front of these buildings and say, this is what I'm going to do, I'm going to claim this now. And somebody's living in them buildings. Some people are enjoying this park. I go to Kinder Morgan's yard in Texas. I'd be put in the crazy house <laughs> if I did that on their property. But it's okay for them to do it because they're multi-billionaires. And not only that, I was taught when I was very little, my dad said, you take a fish out of the water, you killed something. If you cut down a tree, you killed something. If you shoot a deer, you killed something. And these two are able to go into Alberta and put up them tar sands. They're breathing carbon monoxide 24 seven. They said, don't bath your baby no longer than two minutes in the water, it's that poison. Angry! Angry! And then they say to us, when we start protesting them, they said the Indians are terrorists. Angry! Okay. Well, you're a murderer. Angry! I saw this real nice quote just this morning. Um, only after the last tree has been cut down, only after the last river has been poisoned, only after the last fish has been caught, only then will you find that money cannot be eaten. That's a Cree prophecy. Sometimes when I talk at gatherings such as this, I say sometimes when I'm in my sacred ceremony in the sweat lodge, I say a prayer for Kinder Morgan. I say a prayer for his children, because they're, they're going to be a part of this, which is our, definitely our, our future. What do you want in your future? What do they want in their future? They couldn't even live long enough to spend the billions that they have. They could never live long enough to spend what they already have. Why don't they put their money towards something sensible like solar or wind energy or something. There was a time in our history when the government was saying, nobody's dying, we're not killing anybody. 
there was a time in our history, in our recent history, and where they said, oh, it's not poison, oh, we're not doing bad things. And they put, they were, Kinder Morgan's rich enough to put these commercials on TV where it all looks fine and it's, they're doing wondrous things for us. They're not doing anything for us. Only they're going to benefit and they're going to bring the tankers to California. They're going to refine it. They're helping China. My good friend Melina, when she tries to talk, her cousin, uh, who's only 18, she died. Her mother has cancer, her father has cancer. They haven't drank their water for over 10 years or since that tar sands happened in this. Only for those 1%, um, that very, very rich 1%, they're the only ones benefiting from, they're, they're, they're making money on the deaths of our people. Shame! 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 We're getting commercials on TV that Kingdom Morgan are doing wonderful things for us. It's not for us, it's for themselves. When I first started talking, I felt something in my heart when I heard that they were going to dredge 50 feet into my inlet. And I, we had a gathering in our gym way smaller than this one. And a lot of my own um, tribal member, uh, members were there. And I said to them, you know, there's a time when you gotta get up off your couch and turn off your remote and turn off your TV games and stand up for something. Yeah. Yeah. I'm telling all of you, you guys, warrior up for God's sake. I like this gathering because sometimes you'll be sitting in, at home and you say, Oh, I'm going to stand by them. Oh, I believe in what they're saying or what they're doing. But right here, right now, there's body presence, and I thank you. Territory. We were called the. They were called the natives are stopping progress. No, we're not. We're not protesters. We're protectors. We're trying to protect. Us. I thank you for your ears, and I thank you for listening to my words. I, I really, really appreciate it. Like I said, I'm not here for myself anymore. I'm here for my children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren that they'll have a better life than I ever did. Thank you. fish on there. I have a um, whale song. The whales used to come in and go up our inlet. So if you don't mind, I'm going to sing the whale song. It's um, sort of in the making. Um, I'm going to sing it for the fish and the whales out there that the whales will come back and trust us human beings with their lives again.
extra. Thank you. Who here thinks that Stephen Harper is going to do the right thing? I'm still holding out hope. I still think that Stephen Harper knows how many thousands of people are opposed. He knows that the provincial government of British Columbia in its official submission to the joint review panel said that this pipeline should not be approved. We're still hoping he might do the right thing. But we're holding this rally to say, if you don't stop this pipeline, we will. project is wide and it doesn't matter if you're a student like me or if you're a young worker you're from the labor movement or the environmental movement this project is bad for British Columbia so we want to make sure that Stephen Harper hears our voice all the way to Ottawa. On behalf of Mayor Gregor Robertson in the city of Vancouver we have at least one other councillor wandering around in a hockey shirt. Uh, councillor Carr is out there somewhere uh, and Nikki Sharma is with us today from the Vancouver Park Board to add words of welcome. It's an honor for us to stand alongside you in your fight. Alongside communities up and down the BC coast and today alongside communities across the country in saying no to Embridge. Yeah. It's been a, you're fighting not just against a pipeline but you're fighting for something. You're fighting for a sustainable future, sustainable economy and a better healthier world for our people and our communities. Vancouver. You might have heard we're trying to be the greenest city on earth by the year 2020. In just five years since we were elected, we've been able to reduce water use by 16%. We've been able to reduce waste by 40%. We've been able to increase active transportation by 10%. And our greenhouse gas emissions are down 4%. At the same time, we've been able to create thousands of new good paying green jobs in the city of Vancouver. expansion goes through, none of that will matter. In just three days, three days of increased production related emissions from that pipeline, new pipeline capacity, that will wipe out all of the gains that we have made on greenhouse gas reduction here in the city of Vancouver. And that's without even talking about the massive impact that would happen when a spill happens. Uh, from that oil being shipped along our coastal waters. You might have heard Kinder Morgan say, don't worry, a spill will actually be good for your economy. <laughs> That's not the kind of economy that we see for here in Vancouver. And it's why from day one we have stood up and said no to Kinder Morgan and their sevenfold increase of tankers through their new proposed pipeline. And we're in this to win it. We have all of the scientific and technical know-how that we need to build a sustainable future with good jobs that work yeah. for people and communities. What we've lacked is the political will from the province and the federal governments, but no government can ultimately hide from the people and it's why it's so important that you chase them down and make sure that your voice is heard. Thank you for standing up for governments that stand up for you. with you all today. I'm a park commissioner, so that means that we're responsible for taking care of all these beaches and these beautiful parks and the park that you're in right now. And that's something that we take very seriously. And we've taken a stand against Kinder Morgan because we don't want to see that here. We don't want to see any of these beautiful places destroyed by an oil spill. Um, just wanted to say that your local government stands with you and I'm here with the city and the park board to know that and you guys should know that we're here with you. We care, we want this to stop and we're um, very happy to see so many people come out, so many numbers, so yay. Nations, Sail with Tooth, Haida, Hailsuk, Heisla, all of these nations, including the carrier and the seconde, are going to be taking 
Stephen Harper, and Northern Gateway to court. Here's the other good news. Stephen Harper is pissed off the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. And we have him. Maybe the biggest mistake that he's ever made. like if anybody gets in yes, Stephen sir. Harper's way, he throws him under the bus. That's, right. That's what he's trying to do to the Chief Justice now. <laughs> Sheila Fraser did a bad audit on Harper. He threw her under the bus. Yeah. The Chief Electoral Officer caught these guys with robocalling. Yeah. Illegal electioneering processes which got this bloody government a, a majority yeah. that we're suffering with today. That's they right. did it illegally and they, they got caught and Stephen Harper threw the chief electoral officer That's under the bus. Right, That's the kind of democracy That's we have. Oh, Mike Duffy, he was so stupid yeah. to get caught. And for getting caught, not necessarily for doing it, but for getting caught, Stephen Harper threw him under the bus. <laughs> Stephen Harper threw Pamela Wallen under the bus, not for doing it, but for getting caught. Stephen Harper threw Patrick Brazo under the bus for getting caught. There was one man that came along that still had a shred of decency left in Harper's office, Nigel Wright. He thought, it isn't fair that, that Mr. Duffy steal this money from Canadians and I'm going to pay them back. Stephen Harper decided that Nigel Wright had made a mistake and threw him under the bus. That's what we've got going on in Ottawa right Dictator! now. Ladies and gentlemen, Dictator! there's nobody left in the bus. Dictator! They're all under it. And Stephen Harper is on his way out. That's what we've got going on. Redford is also under the bus. She got caught with her finger in the cookie jar as well, so she's under the bus in Alberta. And Harper and his ethical oil guys, aka the robocallers, are supporting the wild reform, I mean the wild rose party in Alberta, and they're going to try and take over there as well. That's what we've got going around. I just returned from the capital of Canada the capital where our Prime Minister comes from. I just returned from Calgary. Yeah. I was at the Enbridge AGM. All is well. We told Uncle Al, Al Monaco, the CEO for Enbridge, don't waste any more money on this Northern Gateway project. Mitigate your losses. You're not going to win this one. You're never going to British Columbia. <laughs> Mr. Monaco later tweeted. He talked to a native leader who said he would meet again. So all is well. Likely no lead, need to implement the AFERD report recommending building a strong relationship with First Nations in British Columbia. Al's talking to one native leader has agreed to meet with him. All is going to be well with Northern Gateway. Keep investing. That's what they've got going. A little closer to home, all is well. The salmon are going to be safe. We don't need to implement Cohen because Janet Holder has told us 15,000 times that this pipeline is going to protect salmon. Yeah. Yahoo, baby! She's going to protect salmon. Pipelines protect salmon. Do we believe this crap or not? The people of Vancouver and the rest of this province better bloody well get ready. Because Janet Holder has told us 15,000 times that pipeline routes are better habitat for caribou than the natural stuff that we've got. And they're going to be thundering down on Vancouver after all these pipelines are built. We're going to have caribou everywhere. As Janet Holder told us 15,000 bloody times in the last couple of months. Idiot!
self-evident fact, Enbridge Northern Gateway has spent a half a billion dollars. Janet Holder, cute little Janet Holder, I, I look at her and I think about Stephen Harper and Maureen with that little panda bear in their lap. <laughs> Janet is as cute as that panda bear that Stephen Harper and them brought over in order to consummate, in order to consummate uh, our relationship with China. Christy Clark is in, is in Asia, protecting all of us in our environment as we speak. She has taken a little walk down Harper Road. She has changed the Park Act to allow the pipelines to go in there and investigate. I wonder what they'll do when the investigation is over. Christy Clark, you better sober up if you think you're going in our parks. She has given the Oil and Gas Commission authority over allocating water. Well, this makes a hell of a lot of sense because in order to move water, you either need a tank or you need a pipe. So I think that's probably about the extent of the logic that this provincial government had uh, engaged in when they decided the Oil and Gas Commission was now in charge of water in the Northeast and along the route. Can you imagine the, the logic and amount of intelligence that goes into making those kind of decisions? What next, Christy? Are you going to roll over a Northern Gateway? Are the five conditions that you put out there just about ready to roll over? Because I'll guarantee you that First Nations aren't rolling over and, and, and condition number four will never ever be met. You will not be So Stephen Harper, Christy Clark, Uncle Al Monaco, Janet Holder and your 15,000 ads, and Alberta, we're ready. Yeah. We've been ready for a while. I'm getting sick and tired of waiting. I want them to come and try and, and bring that pipeline through this province. The Yinkadene, the Carrier Secondy, the Wet'suwet'en, the Haida, the Temshan, the Heiltsuk, the Nuhalk, and all the rest of the First Nations in this province are going to stop them dead in their tracks. gentlemen something even bigger than all of that and you represent that here today these people are going to get a lesson in democracy that they haven't had in a long time and they bloody well need it so all of you are going to have your say and these pipelines are going to sober up pretty damn soon How y'all doing out there? Personal MP for many years, <laughs> as well as Spencer Chandra Herbert. Y'all know Spencer? Of course, I want to recognize that we're in the Musqueam territory and Coast Salish territory, uh, but I also want to recognize that we're here in Spencer Herbert's riding. <laughs> Um, you know, it's so helpful, of course, to have the support of people like Libby and Spencer. Uh, you know, when you're fighting some of the richest, most powerful corporations in the world and their friends in government, you need friends like Libby and Spencer. So without any further ado, I want to introduce you guys. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ben. Well, I'll tell you, this is a great turnout today, and you all look fabulous. And I want to say a special hello to all the radicals, the adversaries, and the foreign puppets. You look like fine, upstanding citizens to me. I also want to say thank you.
thank you to the activists and the First Nations leaders who just very recently went to Calgary to the Enbridge Shareholder Annual General Meeting. This was actually a very courageous and important thing to do, to make sure that those shareholders are getting the message from us, the people, that what their corporation is doing is not going to be allowed, is won't be allowed to happen in British Columbia. So thank you to those activists and First Nations leaders who took the time to go to Enbridge itself and deliver the message. today just very briefly to bring greetings from the Federal New Democrats in Ottawa, the official opposition, our leader Thomas Mulcair, Nathan Cullen who's been doing a fantastic job in BC, organizing and speaking out against Enbridge. He's been throughout BC organizing workshops and for us, you know, we've been fighting this day in and day out in Parliament and will continue to do that. But the issue here is about our democracy and our voice. And this rally here today and the ones that are taking place across the province tells me that we have unity, we have strength, we have motivation, we have, we have, we know we have the, the future of our province on our side. And so what we're doing here today at this rally to oppose this pipeline and the super tankers is so important. And it's really important that we keep keep the momentum going because we do have to get that message through to Stephen Harper and the Conservative government that they're not going to ignore the people of British Columbia. We won't let them do it. So I want to tell you that we will continue that fight in Ottawa. We will continue it here in the community. And because of that alliance and that solidarity, we have the city of Vancouver. We have different elected representatives, my provincial colleagues who are also here. And this voice will grow louder and stronger and it will become such an issue that even that conservative government and even Stephen Harper, who is now so removed from what people are feeling and thinking in BC, that he won't be able to ignore our voice. I say because I don't want to speak long. You know, on Monday we had a truly remarkable activist in our city who died. His name was Bud Osborne. And I think some of you may have know, known him or you've heard of him. He was a great activist and hero in the downtown east side. And he was a poet. And his words inspired us in, for many struggles in that community and in our city. And so I thought today I wanted to look at some of the poetry that, that Bud wrote, and he wrote a great book called Raise Shit, which kind of says it all, and that's what we're doing. And so I wanted to read a few lines from his poem called Raise Shit. He says, there is a planetary resistance against consequences of globalization, against poor people being driven from land they have occupied in common and in community for many years. We have become a community of prophets, rebuking the system and speaking hope and possibility into situations of apparent impossibility. Our words and actions of resistance and comfort and commitment like mountains. Thank you everybody, stay strong. Libby Davies, thank you, Libby. And thank you to all of you for standing up for our planet, for standing against an oil spilled, filled coast, for standing up against Enbridge. Thank you to the Musqueam, the Tsleil-Waututh, the Squamish for having us on their traditional territories. And thank you for standing with us, for all of us together, to say no to Enbridge, to say yes to a climate that sustains us all, to say yes to a planet that will be there for our children. My name is Spencer Chandra Herbert. I'm the proud MLA for Vancouver West End. On behalf of all the people in the West End, we say thank you for standing with us against Enbridge and against oil tankers polluting our coast.
this beach, this sunset beach where we stand, just imagine 150 years ago, before colonialism took over, before we had these buildings, we had trees the size of these buildings. We had salmon runs like the salmon runs you've seen echoing and moving, swimming through the crowds. Incredible fish, incredible shellfish here before the pollution took hold, before the need for profit took over the need for love of the nature, before our relationship with nature. We decided, and the economy decided, that domination was better than the love of nature. Decided to dominate the environment than to have a relationship. We need to get back to having a relationship with nature, not a domination of nature. We are here today to stand with the North. Do you stand with the North? with Kitimat, with Terrace, Hazelton, Smithers, Prince George, the entire First Nations communities all over the north. You stand with British Columbia? Yes. John Horgan, my colleagues from the Vancouver, David Eby, Jenny Kwan, Shane Simpson, George Heyman, the entire New Democrat Caucus from all over BC, they stand with you as well. Because we know, we know we must move from being just defenders of our coast, defenders of the climate, to fighters for our coasts, to fighters for the climate. That's how we will achieve victory. That's how we will tell Enbridge. That's how we will tell Stephen Harper and Christy Clark that we say no. This is our coast. We will not let this pipeline pass. United with solidarity, with love of our climate, with love of our communities, we will beat this pipeline together. We will beat this climate change together. We will build this province together, one that we can be proud of for our children, our children's children, on into the future with resilience with balance, to learn the lessons that we did not learn when colonialism took over, to bring back unity, to bring back resilience. Let's do that together. It's an honor to stand here with you today. We will win this fight. Thank you very much. to get 5,000 people out on a cloudy Saturday because they all thought that the Enbridge Pipeline was a really great idea. And that is because they are fighting for selfish gain and putting the risk on others. But you are fighting for your children, for each other, and for our world. stop this pipeline? Just look around for a second. I can see thousands of people right here, right now, that aren't going to let the Northern Gateway Pipeline get anywhere near their province. Enbridge has big tech books, but we have big hearts. They have lobbyists, but we have determination. The Harper government may think that they've got the last call on this project, but we, as British Columbians, have already made our decision, and that decision is no.